Welcome to the AFR Saints channel, where we provide you daily content on your favorite team, the New Orleans Saints. Do us a favor and hit that subscribe button. Be sure to leave your comments below and smash that like button. Who dat? Got something in my inbox earlier today from uh, betonline.ag, and it were it was odds, the betting odds, for uh, the for Daniel Jones's next team. And I, I clicked on it just out of I, I just guess just out of curiosity because he's a guy that was a former number six overall pick, and um, it went it went so badly there uh, in New York down the stretch. But I also thought, like, would the Saints have odds? Well, as I clicked on it, the, the betting favorite is the Baltimore Ravens. And it would make some sense because you'd probably look at, at contenders. You'd probably look at contenders first um, because, obviously, from his standpoint, he'd want to go somewhere where he might have a chance to win. And from a contender standpoint, you'd want to bolter, bolster that quarterback room in case... You needed a veteran backup. So it makes sense. The Baltimore Ravens have the best odds. You can pull this up, Holly. Vikings next. Uh, and look, I mean, they got J.J. McCarthy, who's missing the entire season. But Sam Darnold hasn't playing playing well. I mean, they beat the Bears in overtime yesterday. Uh, Raiders, who don't really have a, a plan at quarterback. Cowboys, which Dak's done for the year, so that might make some sense if you're not going to commit to Cooper Rush or Trey Lance. Um, Lions, another contender. And then you get the Dolphins as well, Niners, then some longer odds teams. Panthers, Seahawks, Colts. And then at 25-1, to 1, there's a group of teams that includes the Patriots, the Jets, the Titans, and the Saints. And so I just thought about it, like, what, what would that look like? And I'm certain for Daniel Jones, he wants to be a starter again in the NFL. And that's great. Good for him. Pursue an opportunity. Maybe new beginnings. You could find a spot. I mean, Jones is a guy, after all, that won a playoff game. I mean, in New York, a couple of years ago, they beat the 13-4 and Minnesota Vikings. So he has quarterbacked the team not only to the playoffs, but to a, to a playoff win. So, I mean, it's not all terrible. Now, he's played in 70 games with 69 starts, and his record is 24-44-1. and one. Again, not good. Went to a bad situation, won three games in his first year, then five, then four, then boom, there was the 9-6-1 and one year where they made the playoffs and won a playoff game. Anyway, and they gave him a giant contract, which was clearly missed time. That's on the Giants. I don't really care. What I look at it from the standpoint is a quality backup. And if you gave me the option of a rookie cutting their teeth, finding their way, or a veteran backup, I would take the veteran backup nine times out of ten. The one exception would be if your team stinks and you're trying to build and develop your rookie for the future. Maybe even like if you drafted a high-level rookie, like a first, second rounder, Jalen Hurts in Philadelphia is a great example. They took a swing in round two to see if Hurts could become their quarterback of the future. And he was there behind Nick Foles and, and Carson Wentz. And then ultimately got the job. Um, but I look at the Saints this year, right? Derek Carr's your starter. You paid him a ton to be your starter. And you had a couple of guys you drafted behind him. And you don't know what their, their future may be, may hold. But I look at where the Saints are right now at 4-7. and seven, And when Carr got hurt, he missed three games. And you went 0-3 oh with Spencer Rattler as your starter. I'm not going to tell you that, man, they had Danny Dimes. Boy, they'd be a playoff team. But could you have found a way to scratch out one of those wins? Like, could you have beaten Denver on a Thursday night in New Orleans? Maybe. I know the defense stunk. But look at the second half against Tampa. Now, you gave up 51 against Tampa, but a lot of that also had to do with how bad your offense was in turning the football over. If you had a veteran that could steady, you might have been different. I don't know. But could you have scratched out a win at home against the Chargers? I, or, on, excuse me, on the road against the Chargers? Maybe, maybe not. I don't know. But one win in that stretch 
And we're talking mathematically about a dramatically different path for the Saints this year. And we saw that play out in 2020 with Jameis backing up New Orleans and tw- backing up Drew Brees. And in 2018 with Teddy Bridgewater backing up Drew Brees. And so if nothing else, with that experience with Drew Brees and the more veteran backups as opposed to where Chase Daniel was his guy who backed him up forever and it was really a thing where you know, Chase Daniel was, was the backup because Drew liked him and wanted another set of eyes. When he came to the sideline, he could talk to him. Not that you ever thought you'd win anything at all with Chase Daniel. But as you had a, an aging veteran quarterback who suffered injuries, you needed someone that could keep the train on the tracks until your starter came back. So I look at that as great value. If you can have a veteran player like that who's started 69 career games, who's played in the playoffs as a guy on the ready or at the ready, if you needed him. So I'm not sitting here trying to tell you, hey, go ham and make Daniel Jones your future. I certainly wouldn't do that. I don't know that there's a single team in the NFL that would do that. Shouldn't do that. But would I rather Daniel Jones as the backup in New Orleans over Spencer Rattler and Jake Hayner? Absolutely. No question. I might prefer Daniel Jones as the starter over Derek Carr. I'm not committing to that pot committed right now. But at least with Daniel Jones, you're talking about a guy that's 27 years old as opposed to Carr who's 33, who's been a starter for 11 years and we know what he is, a mid-tier quarterback. I'm not saying Jones will ever be more than that, but could he find... A resurgence somewhere else? Maybe. Maybe not. But a viable backup option? He's better than what you got. And if you're a GM worth your salt, you should take a look at every spot on your roster all the time. all consist, Continuously. It's an ever-evolving, a daily evolving process to see if there is someone available who's better than who you have right now. And today, Daniel Jones as a backup is a better option than Spencer Rattler and Jake Hayner. And if you're not going to commit to either of those guys long-term, and I'm not saying you have to, then yeah, I think Daniel Jones is a better option. Now, if you sign one of those guys to your practice squad, there's a really good chance someone could sign them off your practice squad to their, full, to their active roster, and you'd lose them, like you did with Ian Book a few years ago. And so you'd lose your draft capital and everything you have invested in those young players. But if you don't feel like those young players are your future anyway, then what are you doing at that position? You got to get better. And I'm not saying go break the bank for him. But, and, and I don't even know that having an experienced backup really matters this year because I don't think the Saints are going on some amazing run, run of the playoffs anywhere. But for 2025, whatever direction you're going, that could make a lot of sense as a veteran viable backup quarterback. We've seen former high level starters become great backups. Marcus Mariota did it after being the second overall pick, Jameis did it. It's kind of the way of it. And he could be an option in that respect. And if I'm saying, I'm certainly looking at it. This is a better option you got right now uh, behind Derek Carr. Hey, thanks so much for watching. Please leave your comments. I love to interact. And be sure to hit the red subscribe button below.